Hello, friends. Here we are again. I haven't live streamed in the, the longest time. But, uh, but yeah, here we are. <laughs> Using a different view this time because I want y'all to be able to see it when I actually open it up. Rather than it just being me with the close-up view and then you can't see anything. And I don't have, um, I didn't feel like doing like a double camera top down. I'm not, I don't feel like doing all that. I, ain't, I don't got time for all that. Watching this while getting ready to shoot a wedding. Yeah, yeah, I was about to say this is, I already assume not that many people are going to view in because like everybody's shooting weddings, especially it's October. Everybody's shooting weddings. You already know that. Um, Cause yeah, it's what is one o'clock where I'm at. West Coast, y'all are three hours behind. So I mean, everybody's prepping basically. <laughs> the hair. Ah! <laughs> I cut it off, man. It was too long. It was it was out of control. My age starting to catch up with me. My uh, my hairline is uh, my hairline is questioning my life. <laughs> I've been wearing my hair long since I was like 16 too, so I cut it occasionally, but I I haven't worn it short in a long time, so. Um, where's my box at? Hold on, let me get this one. FedEx guy I had, he was like, you know how sometimes Amazon has like paid contractors to come through and they just be in like a normal car? This bro came by in a budget truck and then he was asking for my ID to do the delivery and I was like, my dude, I've never had a delivery guy ask for my ID. I don't know. I don't know. It sounded kind of, kind of sus. So if I disappear off the face of the earth, my identity is stolen, y'all know why. <laughs> Can't be springing haircuts on this. <laughs> Everyone's jumping on the stream like, who is this though? <laughs> who is this guy? But yeah, here it is. It's for real. So basically, because again, I'm sure everyone assumes like, oh, he's a Fuji ambassador and oh, he's on YouTube. I clearly did not get this for free. Um, I'm selling my 100S to be able to get this because it's not cheap. <laughs> no wedding today. Nope. I have uh, one more in November and I'll be done. I'm also second shooting in November as well. Um, but yeah, I, I didn't have as many weddings this year, mainly because I tried to focus back on the YouTube. So I took, took off weddings a little bit to focus more on YouTube. <laughs> I look younger. Thank you. When did the haircut? <laughs> I did it, uh, when did I do it? It was like Tuesday or something. It was this week. My wife, like, so again, I've been wearing my hair long like that for like 16 years. So even she's like, I don't know. She's like, I like it with your hair long. <laughs> Camera five digits. I mean, yeah, it ain't cheap. It's like 7K or something. It ain't cheap. But yeah, let's see what we're working with. Here goes all of our stuff. We got exclusive free trial of Capture One. We got a battery, which I already have batteries. That's what I didn't notice. Um, when I was selling my 100S, I went back through the box and I had a battery in there that I had never used. And I was like, oh, cause I just 
used my batteries that I had already. So that was cool. I don't feel bad about my A1 yet. <laughs> what else is in here? What is this? Oh, it's the viewfinder. Wow. Does it just not have it connected at all? I'm not gonna open this until I know what I have going on here. We got plugs and chargers, we got a strap, USB-C cable, which I'm just gonna leave all that stuff in there. When I resell the stuff, I'm kinda extra about reselling and then also keeping my box. So I'm just gonna leave all the stuff that I don't actually need in there so that when I sell it, I can be like, look, brand new stuff in the box. What I gotta do to get over to something. <laughs> <laughs> everyone everyone always talks about that I always keep you should see my boxes yo I got a whole a whole thing of boxes Woo. oh yeah the viewfinders wow wow yo this thing is pretty though Uh oh, get in there. Put our information back in. Close. So here it goes. I gotta block my face so it'll focus. This thing is gorgeous, yo. So first initial impressions like first time ever holding it it's way more boxy than the 100s the 100s has a more like rounded off and it's definitely bigger but it doesn't it doesn't feel like like oh my god like it's also it's not that heavy and clearly i don't have glass on it yet but it feels good it looks good too like the um i don't know whatever matte finish this is on everything like, it looks good. It has this, like, almost like brush gunmetal look to it. It's a big boy. I mean, yeah, this thing ain't tiny. That's, you always look at the, every time I look at the sensor, it's just like, dang. <laughs> oh, that's crazy. So <laughs> we like them thick, man. Can I use this without the viewfinder? That'd be dope for a video setup though. So we got our CF Express and SD card now. And is there anything else with this? Oh, there's a trigger port on the side here. Then we have Ethernet. Can you put an APS-C next to it? <laughs> we got our full-size HDMI, finally. Oh yeah, putting putting a um, APS-C next to the medium format it's it's always funny to me like it really is kind of crazy there you go look at that it's huge <laughs> it's just like check out my sensor size bro Oh no, yeah, the autofocus, it's just cause it's, it wants to do face autofocus, but I keep blocking it. So it's like, Arr. it's literally like double the size. Oh yeah, I need a battery. Oh, these batteries are probably dead. I should try and get a battery that has a charge on it. Oh no, full. Yeah, no, nah, this feels good, yo. And look, like my hands aren't big, but like, 
I don't even need the battery grip. Just talking about holding. That's what um this spot here. This is your where the battery grip connects. We got our good old PCM on the top there. Which a lot of Fuji people complain, but I actually don't mind PCM. But that's because I don't actually use the um I don't use the top dowels on like the XT series. Um so wait, is this a is this this a hot shoe? Or is that different? Oh, it has like a plug on it. Would you prefer the XT5 or XH2? I prefer the XT5. Um, I don't like the body of the XH as much as the XT series. Now again, I am biased because I've shot on an XT2 and XT3. Like I know that body like the back of my hand. So that one doesn't totally count as much, but um, here I'll put this back here so we can have it sitting in the back looking beautiful. But yeah, um, so yeah, I just don't like the body of the XH series for shooting stills. Video, I like it a lot. Would you use this as a primary body for a wedding? I might. Um, I have to see how it performs, but supposedly the way Fujifilm was talking about it. Now remember, I shot a wedding on the um, the 100S, which let me let me link that for y'all, just so everyone can familiarize themselves with it. But yeah, I shot a whole wedding on the 100S. I had dual 100Ss, and I did that, and it was fine. But the whole time. You know, it was just, it felt just a little bit slow, just a tiny bit. You can do it. You just have to be very intentional about how you're shooting. I'm so lost at how this connects. I never used the GFX 100 that had the removable viewfinder. So this just looks crazy to me. Oh, what? Uh, okay, so the viewfinder itself has, you see this piece here, if it wants to focus, this one here, that's covering up all the like connection pieces because you don't want to mess that up clearly. Oh, I see, yeah, and so it connects. That looks like a normal hot shoe too though. I wonder if you can take the viewfinder off and then just use use it as a hot shoe. So do you think it's worth to upgrade to an XT5 coming from an XT4? It's, now the, the extra resolution is nice. Like I really do like the extra resolution. I think it's really good, um, but it's a close call. It depends on what you like. Like for me, it made sense because um, I shoot mainly stills and I like the tilt screen, not the flip screen. So for me, I just didn't like the X-T4 in the first place. <laughs> All talking head videos filmed with GFX. Yeah, about to sell my X-H2S now and just use the GFX for everything. I mean, it does 4K60. Also, y'all, Reggie in the house. Y'all go check out his channel. My boy blowing up. <laughs> Why would they not just have the viewfinder attached? Cause you can, so you can switch into different types of viewfinders. And again, I think you can use this without the viewfinder for like video and stuff, which honestly, I may even start doing that myself. Or I know of, even my mentor, he doesn't shoot with the viewfinder a lot. So like, I can see people just doing that. But yeah, this, this here, this tilt screen, that's what it's about y'all. I hate the flip screen so much for stills. Does it go sideways too? Yeah. Literally editing photos with your presets, awesome. But yeah, normally I do use the viewfinder, so let's go ahead and plop this on there. So you see you have this hot shoe connection looking type thing. 
The difference is, I don't know if y'all can see it, there's like a port on the top of it. Almost like you can plug something in. And then this also has, you see it looks like a cartridge there. So that end piece that looks like a cartridge is what's gonna connect. And then it kind of slides in. Oh yeah, nice and secure. There we go. So there's the whole body with the viewfinder on it. I like how it sits, it sits up and back. So there's space between you and the camera. So you're not like face up on the actual screen. What happened to you? What happened to your hair? It was time for it to go, y'all. I had to restart over. I think my my I think my hairline is um, you know, my age is catching up with me, so cut it down to start over and see if I can take a look. Let's see what we got here. English. Time area, New York, daylight savings on. Month, date, year. It is October the 14th. I need AM, PM. Sorry, y'all. I'm not a 24 hour guy. <laughs> and it is 1 22 PM. The good old first setup. Great. Auto power off for the temp. Oh, so this is a setting, y'all. This auto power up, because people ask me about this a lot with like the XS and the XH2. Um, there's an option for how quick it's gonna like tell you that it's getting hot and turn off. And I like to turn this to high. So then basically what happens is that when it's on high, like it'll get hotter before it is like, hey bro, I'm hot. Yeah, see? The max temps will be set to higher. <laughs> Thanks y'all, everyone's, <laughs> that's the main point of the stream. What happened to his hair? <laughs> okay, cool. We in there now. Here go my settings. Raw recording, we do compressed. Lossless compressed. We're shooting JPEG for the moment. Classic Chrome all day. That Riella though is looking kind of sweet. It's also kind of, it's right there by Classic Chrome. It's, I think it's like Classic Chrome, but with more saturation. Grain effect off, dynamic range. We'll do 100. Tone curve is minus one on highlights, minus two on shadows. Sharpness, I push up to two. And that's my, my normal um, film sim setup. The here's the real unbox. <laughs> Whoa, mount adapter setting, lens registration. Whoa, whoa. Autofocus mode, single point. Focus area. Zone custom setting. Whoa, there's like all these new settings. Autofocus mode, all setting. I'm like. There's like new settings I've never seen in a Fujifilm menu system before. I wish they dropped the Riala Ace with the XT5. I mean, yeah, and it's the newer system too, so you would think they would have been able to. Favorite lens on the GFX? It's still the 81.7. That thing is so good. Still waiting on Fuji X Weekly Natural Fills recipe. <laughs> I mean, the Riala might get there. Number of focus points. Autofocus illuminator on, face detection off for the moment. We got subject detection now, which the XT5 and stuff had. 
release focus priority autofocus range limiter touch screen off where's the manual focus uh support where you at auto focus man manual assist focus peak red high okay that's good for now um then i also blew all my money on st cards they're so expensive there was a bunch of deals happening though so i got two more 300 megabits a second sd cards at 256 which the normal ones i have are 128 so these boys was expensive and then i also got a cf express card as well at 256 also so this i mean all this together like these two sds and this cf was like 700 dollars It hurts. That's the um, the downside of being a wedding photographer is it's easier to waste your money all the time. <laughs> is the photo to video mode instant? Well, it looks like it still has, um, so it doesn't have a record button like the X-H series. And that's what's cool. So now that I bought all the newer ones, so the XS20 is what I'm using right now. The XS20 is like a baby X-H2S. So it, I would consider it in the line of XHs. That's really what it is. It's a baby XH series. It's actually, you know what it is? It's what the XT double series was to the XH series. So you had like an XT3 and an XT30. And so now you have the XH2S and the XS20. And they're like together. So that's what it feels like. It feels like a baby XH2S. Um, so the GFX 102, or the second, um, this feels more just like a beefy. It's almost like, I feel like the GFX system is still in the same line as the XT, and XTs are baby GFXs, pretty much. That's what it feels like from my personal experience. Your live stream quality is sharp, which lens, this is the 16 F 1.4, and then also the XS20, which looks good. I'm glad I upgraded. Because again, I don't know if y'all saw that video, but I had an X, X-T30, which I love that camera, and an X-T3. The X-T3 is what I was using for live streaming, and the X-T30 was basically my day-to-day -day carry. But it's like, I had two cameras that for the most part sat around and did nothing all day. Like the X-T3 was only being used if I was live streaming, and the X-T30 was only happening if I was going somewhere with the family and wanted to take pictures. So I decided to swap out with the XS20. So now the XS20 is a nice portable camera that I can actually vlog on or something like that. And it's small and nice that I can take with me while I'm with the family. And the video specs are better so I can use it for live streaming. So like it's actually legit. Um, and the grip is deeper so you can actually hold it. Um, I still love the X-T30 though. And I would recommend it to anyone. I love that camera. Let me get a lens. Let's uh... Oh yeah, let me open this up. <laughs> Everybody seeing the haircut. Yeah, that's that's the real unboxing is the haircut, y'all. I tricked you. Hope you love the GFX2 as much as I do. I'm sure I'm going to because I love the 100S. Again, anytime anyone asked me anything about the 100S, my response was always like, I just wish it was a little bit faster. And again, not saying it was slow, it's medium format, but I just needed it to be a lit, just a little bit faster. And I think Fujifilm, they knew. So they're like, great, now it's faster. See, this is, this is what you need to even be able to shoot on GFX2. So I got a CF Express 256. This should give me a decent amount of photos. 
change from the 100s to the two as well i'm sure it's like it's probably a night and day difference do a selfie for the first shot <laughs> 81.7 is too tight for selfies <laughs> AI, what is happening here? Oh wow, there's so many buttons. I gotta configure the buttons. There's so many buttons. Whoa, I'm really getting six thousand. Oh yes, yeah, JPEG. I'm like six thousand photos. Let's see what I get for raw. That's more like it. Eighteen, <laughs> even with a two hundred fifty-six gig card, you're only getting like eighteen hundred and fifty. Oh wow, compressed give you so much more. Lock, what do I usually shoot on? Compressed? Oh, it's a 16 bit too, that's the problem. Let's see, let's do 16, 14 bit lossless. There we go, that's better. So 16 bit, or excuse me, 14 bit lossless is giving me 2396. 16 bit lossless is only giving me 1800 so yeah those uh changing it to 16 bit makes them files huge i usually only shoot on 14 bit it's like that color depth is almost too much what is this ai button what oh it's subject detection wow they got that set as a but i'm definitely customizing this My little hands, the GFX lenses are too thick for my little hands. <laughs> oh yeah, that's a camera, yo. It's it's not heavy. It's definitely like a good size. But it's like, it's a camera. You know, like this thing is in my hands. Like, yeah, bro. Oh my goodness. Why is the shutter speed? Uh oh, they got it set all weird. Oh, cause I'm in program. Manual is what we want, there we go. You ain't got ISO on the front, my dude. What do they have it as a button? Now I gotta go in here and set the settings. Button dial setup. Command dial setting. We want shutter speed on the back and ISO on the front. Do I have to, yeah, I had to press it, okay, there we go. Oh, the, the viewfinder's all off for my eyes, there we go. heard what there were some firmware updates because the biggest question again with the 80 and even the 55 like they focus well but they do be they be hunting a little bit sometimes oh i didn't even check what's my drive where's my drive set is it this button here that's performance so i usually like to put it in boost yeah autofocus boost Cause that's usually where for the GFX I mean they're big lenses you know it's a lot of glass so I don't I don't blame it so I usually boost for the autofocus so here's drive in the back here so high speed we can go up to eight frames a second oh for the electronic shutter wait what actually what shutter am I using I didn't even check the settings. Shutter type, mechanical. Yeah. So for drive, speed of continuous shooting changes was used. Oh, okay. I see. It's saying eight frames for the mechanical shutter. And then you can go faster than that if you want to. 
low speed burst is only two shutter, two frames a second. I mean, that's fine. That's the low shutter. Shutter sounds good too. Let's see with this uh, high speed. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go. It's what I've always wanted. Is it slow enough that I can actually just shoot on high all the time? It's not, it's too fast. Memory card, this memory card's flying through this. I'm shooting it raw now too. Actually, look, let's see what we can get. Actually here, let's format the card and see how many raw shots we can take. High speed burst. I'll use my, uh, my chill hop guy. Y'all know Chill Hop? They make great music. <laughs> so I'll use my Chill Hop guy as the model. Let's see what we can get. Y'all, can you hear the shutter? Y'all, could you hear it? I hope y'all could hear it. Oh, it's, it's buffering forever though. Oh no, it's done. It's done buffering. That wasn't so bad. Yo, so that was, that was lossless compressed at 14 bit and that sounded like at least a hundred shots um i guess i can let's pop it into the computer real quick we can actually look at it like a buffer like that i don't even need that for weddings like that's too much Yeah, 121 shots in a single buffer. With lossless compressed. That's actually pretty good. Honestly, it's better than some of the other cameras. You know why? It's because it has that CF Express. All the other Fuji cameras be using SD cards. So here's the thing with RAF. Like... Mac OS doesn't like the RAF files. Like, nobody likes the RAF files, actually. Um, I guess I can jump in a Lightroom real quick. Here's the photo I took 50 times. This was the... Um, the the 81.7 still one of my favorite lenses like even look at the fall off from his um I was focused on his eyes so even that 1.7 that that's a thin super shallow thanks for that Sub. Wow, 120 photos. That's really good. Oh, yo, did y'all see that new, um, y'all saw the new uh, blur mode in Lightroom? Let me see if I have a picture that it'll work on. I don't think, this is not a great example for it. 
All right, hold on. Just make sure we're looking at only iPhone photos, yeah. So I shot this with an iPhone, right? It looks great. The new iPhone be kicking. The raw files are good, y'all. Lightroom blur is pretty nice. Yeah, so the Lightroom blur, um, it seems like I haven't really used it in Lightroom myself, but inside of um, Lightroom Classic, they give you a lot of control and it's kind of surprising. Um, so it's down here now in the new update. See here, lens blur, early access. So I can apply that. This is not the best photo for it though. There's not a lot of depth behind her. Yeah, cause even the way it tried to do it, it tried to do foreground blur, which I guess makes sense for this photo, but. So you have this option here, which is actually like where the focus is happening and how shallow that depth of field is. I need to pull this up a little bit. And you can also, you can visualize it too. So I can turn it on like this and I can see what's in focus and is not in focus. So the thing is, I need to get her in focus, so like that. But I don't want this foreground focus. So I'm gonna pull that back actually. Yeah, we need to pull it back this way I think. Maybe. No, that foreground board, it, it looks bad. Oh yeah, there we go. So yeah, I'll put everything in focus like that. And have the depth like right where she is. Cause that's the real thing. Everyone always, new features like this come out and people like freak out and they're like Aah! And it's like, with someone who is like talented and has an eye for it, you should be able to realistically use it and actually make it look fairly realistic. Cause you understand what it, like a real camera is gonna look like. So you should be able to use it without it looking just like absolutely fake. And the fact that you can change the actual like depth of field is basically the biggest thing for this like because yeah like looking at it now that looks fairly natural like the way this shot is there wouldn't be a whole bunch of depth in it anyway and you can kind of see here in the like this looks pretty decent if it wants to there it goes okay Like this really does look like bokeh in the back. Actually, they did a really good job. Like it's it's kind of scary. Like this is an iPhone photo, y'all. And with the right editing, like really. Yeah, and you can change the shape because I think I changed it to the. Um, this one here, we have the five blade, commonly seen. This one looks the best to me. The circles don't, I don't know, something about the circles don't look good. They're too circular. I mean, the cat's eye, that's what a lot of Fuji cameras be looking like. But yeah, I like the five blade the most. So yeah, like again, you can choose to get mad or you can finesse the photo. I, I tried it. It even, what it's great at too is for photos that are already, um, let's see, this one here. So when I did the X-T5 versus the GFX, right? And so clearly, X-T5 shots have blur on them already, but you know, their crop sensor. You're only gonna get so much background blur, but now with the lens blur, I can bump it up just a little bit and you can't really tell because there was already blur back there anyway. I'm just like enhancing it a bit. It is ridiculous, y'all.
like honestly this this like and you know now it has enough blur because look at it without it that's clearly APS-C. Bump it up some. That's why I was like, I need more background blur. And uh, again, again, getting it in camera makes the most sense. But at the end of the day, really, like if I was cool with the camera I'm using and it works fine for me, and I wanted a little bit of extra bump in my background blur, I can add it now. And it like you almost you really couldn't tell like if I didn't tell you that I did it you'd just be like that's a great shot bro oh yeah here's it let's do it on this one first off why did I edit this like you ever go back to edits you've done and you're like this looks horrible yo so here we are we got our APS-C background blur i can jump in and boom now this is looking a little heavy but again i can come in and change the depth a little bit i don't know why it has the back center And then, yeah, again, if you're not going crazy with it, like, it looks believable. See, that that looks a little fake, but... This, like, 65 range, just bump it up a little bit more. And then, honestly, let's see what this looks like compared to the, um... Did I edit one for the... Where are my GFX pictures? Where are they? What's happening? Am I losing my mind? Are they not synced up correctly? XC5. Where's the 80? I never edited that one. Am I crazy? What is happening here? They should be like side to side. crazy what's happening <laughs> nice haircut i got mine a few gigs my first two gigs off of your videos awesome are you ditching APS-C for good no i still love my xt5s i don't understand what's happening here oh nothing's five star is that what's happening i'm over here talking about all this stuff and then i can't even show y'all because for whatever reason i can't find the photos because I'm losing my mind. I really, I don't understand what's happening no more. Why is this happening? I should be able to go here and see all the photos. There it goes. Why is this happening? So yeah, it's not all the way there. On the left is the 33 and on the right is the 80. And again, clearly I can like, what is this? Yeah, this is the 33. So clearly I could be extra and just like 
bump up the blur all the way and be like, yeah, it'll be the same as the GFX, but it's it won't ever be the same as the GFX. This is super annoying. I just want to pick the photos. There we go. But I mean, it it looks good. <laughs> but let's go back to Let me get my So I didn't even get a chance to look at the video stuff. I'm still over here. Oh wow, the viewfinder looks good, yo. Let's see. Um, so let's change it to movie. Oh wow. And now let's see what kind of settings we can get. So we have 4K at 59.94. We have our Cine 5.8K up to 29.97. I think that gets cropped in too, doesn't it? No, it doesn't. I don't, what? What aspect ratio is this? Why is ISO set to auto? Will you still shoot weddings with the T5? Probably, yeah, because I'm, again, I shoot with two bodies. I'm not about to buy another one of these. <laughs> Unless this thing blows my mind, maybe I'll sell my XT5s and buy another one, but these bros are seven, 7K. Like, I ain't got, I ain't got that kind of money. I mean, technically, one wedding will pay for it, but. Four K sixty nine DCI four K. I'm not a video guy. I don't understand none of this. Seventeen by nine. the GFX 100 to the 100S, and now here you are. <laughs> I know. <laughs> we got full HD, also up to 59.9. We have 8K. Please select HDMI on media record for 8K HDMI output. Oh yeah, it crops in. I don't think I would ever use 8K. like. Who's using 8K though? High speed recording? Oh yeah, it's only 1080p. Image format? Whoa, you can switch for the type of lens you're using? Wow. We got a good old F-Log too. Let's see, fix movie crop magnification, data recording. Uh, da, 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 da. Flicker settings. This is all the same stuff we had before. The zebra settings. Oh, we got waveforms. Wow. Oh, it's big. It takes up the whole screen. Is there a way to switch the way it looks? Okay. I was about to say, this bro taking up the whole screen. Um, tally light. I usually like the front one on, but I don't see myself recording myself on the GFX 100. Like, that's kind of drastic. <laughs> 
cooling fan, auto settings. Switch it to the classic chrome. Oh, hold up. That Riala looks nice. I'll do my same tone curve of minus one highlights, minus two on the shadows. F-Log 2 D range priority. Autofocus mode. Oh, they have wide tracking now inside of the Am I really too close? I guess I am. It's too bad they don't got open gate. Uh, what else is in here? Autofocus illuminator, face detection, Manual focus assist. I like my focus meter and peak. Uh, let's just do peak. No touch for now. The fact is this thing does 4K 60 with its huge sensor is, is about to be crazy. It's not even cropped in either. How crazy. And so right now, with my quality set up to, um, What am I set to? I have it at 200 megabits. I'm getting two hours out of this card. I can go to 360 and still get an hour out of it because it's 256. It's not bad. Oh, what am I? Now, clearly I could go to like a higher resolution. I'm just at H.264 all inch of 420 i think do i normally do long gop i can't remember what i normally record at let me check my eight x8 real quick Yeah, I normally do the long gop H.265 because, again, I'm not a video guy. I'm just trying to record something. <laughs> just record it and make it look good. Two six five long gop 420 MOV. That gives me 10 bit. 10 bit color. Oh, yeah, these are big files. Wow, yo, so many buttons. What is this even? Oh, it's for the screen on the top. Wow. I actually, I'm second shooting coming up here soon. I might have to hit them off with like, do you care if I shoot medium format? They're gonna be like, I don't, what is that even? What are you talking about? <laughs> Can't wait for the GFX 50 S2 kit plus the 110. Yeah, the 110. So I sold my 110, but it's a great. It's it's just good. Like it's it's honestly one of the best lenses. Now I'm pretty sure if I remember correctly, I think there's some firmware updates. 
that I need to do for the lenses, actually. Because that's everyone's problem with the 80 and probably the 55 too. I haven't used it enough yet, but. Let's see. GF80. The endless, I think I did this one already though. Version 1.2. Uh oh, that didn't work. How do I check my stuff? What flashes do you use for receptions? I use the Godox V862. I use them for all my flashes. So even my off-camera flashes are Godox V862. Let me pop an SD card in here to see if it makes a difference. I'm trying to get to the firmware update screen and normally you hold display back, which I'm holding the wrong button. Great job. There we go. Lens version, yeah, okay, so I'm on the wrong version. I have a Godox V1 that keeps breaking at the hot shoes. So um, I think someone else, I don't know, maybe it was you mentioning on in my comments that the hot shoe is breaking. I'm curious, how how is the hot shoe breaking? The main reason I'm curious is because the hot shoes are definitely questionable. Um, even on mine, it, they, the hot shoe sometimes, I don't know if I'm like screwing it in too hard or something. Um, but sometimes it definitely feels a little, I don't know, the prongs keep bending. Yeah, maybe that is a common thing. It doesn't happen often, but I think one of mine has the prongs bent because it keeps disconnecting from my camera. So maybe, maybe that's a common thing. I don't think it is, but... So I'm downloading the firmware now for the 80. We're gonna update my lens real quick. And the second time I replaced it, the actual flash broke off from the hot shoe. Whoa, <laughs> now that I've definitely not have happened. That's, that's pretty drastic actually. Let's see, downloads. Oh, it's a zip file. Why is it a zip file? I've never in my life seen a zip file. I guess I just put both the files on the camera. Why are there two files? Yeah, the flash is amazing, but they use cheaper plastic to hold the flash, huh? If you have the latch for the V1, it will break on you. The V1 turns a few times, it'll lock. Should be good. I want what what other brands of flashes are people using? Like, what else is popular? There's there's another brand, and I always forget the name. It's like Speed something. I can't remember what it's called. Oh no, no, not Flashpoint. Flashpoint is basically Godox. Here we go, updating the lens now. What is the other, there's another brand. It's not Flashpoint. What is it called? No, Nissan isn't it either. It's another big brand. Mm, best alternative to Godox. 
Oh, pro photo. That's what I'm thinking of. Pro photo is super expensive. Let's see what they got here. I know they have a... Um, Supposedly they have an iPhone flash. On camera flashes. We got the Pro Photo A10. Woo! That boy's a thousand dollars for a flash. But I mean that's kind of the same difference there. Like, Godox is only, what, three, four hundred dollars So if they are breaking all over the place, it's like, no wonder they're cheap. Turn off camera again. So our lens is updated. It's still not the fastest focuser in the whole world. That's the only problem here. I wonder how the 45 will do. This lens is so much lighter. You just use speed lights or mono lights and strobes. I normally just use speed lights. And what I'll do is I'll just sync all the speed lights to each other. If I'm doing off camera. I mean, yeah, the 45 definitely is focusing faster. It's one of those things, too, where, like, and this is what I've always said with the GFX, you can shoot a wedding with it, but you have to be way more intentional about what you're doing and how you're shooting stuff. You can't just be over here like, let's go, guys. Like, you just have to know what you're doing. Oh, let's see, screen setup. EVF brightness, I like it to be manual. And LCD brightness is also gonna be manual. Image display, 0.5 seconds. Framing guideline, F log of sense on. Electronic level on, 2D, here we go. If I could only keep one camera, it probably would be the X-T5. I still, I love that camera. Like nothing will change that. <laughs> will you get the view on it with the tilt? Probably not. I don't see myself ever shooting like that. And especially like, again, you have to remember like, the main place I'm shooting is weddings or engagements. Like, I don't have time to be like, let me tilt this down. Now, obviously, it would be nice to get a lower shot to be able to just look through the viewfinder like that. Um, but that's what the screen is for. Like, it would just, I don't see it benefiting me. Maybe I'm about to, I'm about to hit up Pro Photo. And be like, y'all trying to, 
Y'all trying to give me some product so I can show it off? But see, they make money. They don't. They don't need lowly YouTuber. <laughs> Is this your first GFX camera? I'm thinking of getting the GFX 50S, but I don't know. It's not, so I own the 100S. I had that for like at least a year and I used it at a couple of weddings and on sessions and I loved it. Um, especially when it comes to resolution, the GFX be hitting, yo. Every time I use it, I'm just like, oh, so good. No tilt adapter. <laughs> but how are you gonna flex the gray? <laughs> yeah, true, it looks cool. Especially people, wow, what is that? Yeah. <laughs> What's the difference between the A10 and the A1X? The world's smallest studio light. How did it know? Oh no, it's because it's the only one in stock. <laughs> 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 I thought it was just like, you shoot Fuji, I know, bro, I got you. Oh, did they discontinue this? Oh, no. <laughs> Why is it discontinued for everyone else, but Fuji comes, they're like, yeah, whatever, you can have the crap. Can this, this connects in the hot shoe, right? What's the back of it look like? I'm trying to see what the buttons look like. Why don't you show me the back? Wow, it, it definitely looks nice. Oh, they got their own grids and stuff. Do you think IBIS is necessary for getting GFX camera? Or are there some GFX lenses that have, do the, do any of the GFXs not have IBIS? I thought they all had IBIS. Buy an A2, but why is it showing me the A1 if it's not even the main thing anymore? Sort by popular. There's not even anything on this page. I'm so lost, yo. 50S and 50R do not. I mean, you'd probably be fine without it. Again, I'm not a, wow, yo, $1,000. I'm not a big, um, you have to have IBIS for stills anyway. Like, you should be shooting at at least one over 250, which will stop motion. So IBIS is kind of pointless at that, like, Unless you're hand holding, trying to shoot something at like one over eighty, but that that shouldn't really be the case. So I I think IBIS is fine. Like I don't think it's a necessity. Honestly, even so, since I've started using cameras that have IBIS, like the XT5, the only thing it's really enabled me to do is one off, use it for video, and two off, do still live shots at like one over sixty if I really wanted to. Because a lot of the times when um, I'm doing reception details, instead of having to flash it and stuff, a lot of times I like to just use the natural light. Um, but what I'll do is I'll just shoot at like literally one over 50, which I can do with the IBIS, but that's the only thing I ever use it for. Like if you're taking photos of people, you wouldn't be able to use it anyway. So it's kind of like IBIS is pointless unless you're doing video for the most part. Because if your shutter gets any slower, you're just going to get motion blur. So it's like, why? Why does it even matter? That's just my opinion, though. I, I've heard, I haven't used the 50S myself, but everyone I've heard that have ever used it absolutely loves it. And I can't remember which one it is that has the same body as the 100S. I guess it's the 50, yeah, the 50S. Um, it's a nice body. It's easy to use. I loved my 100S. Um, I'm not sure how fast it is. I know the reason I wasn't interested in the 50 is because it only did like three frames a second or something, but um, it should be fine. I'd say if you're trying to get into the GFX system and you're eyeing that one, like I'd say do it. Just be aware of what it is you're shooting. Like the 102 for me makes sense 
because I shoot wedding. So I need something that can move a little bit faster. Um, and the 100S just barely wasn't there. But yeah, the 52, if you're doing like portraits and stuff, something that's not as fast as a wedding, it should be amazing. The 100S, like I used to use that in engagement sessions and stuff all the time. It's, it's great for that. It's when things start getting a little bit too fast. That's when it's like, I don't know. I didn't realize Pro Photo was so expensive. Now I know why no one uses them. <laughs> and I mean, the people who do use them swear by them. But yeah, this is, this is, um, this is pricey, yo. Oh, someone was just telling me that the 102 doesn't work with the GFX stuff. So let me test that real quick. The last thing I want to do is get at a wedding and be like, great, and then break my flashes out and they don't work because I haven't tried them out yet. for my flashes are I just had them out and now I'm not sure they are There we go, we found him. Did a double take when I opened the stream because you're <laughs> It's like, who is this? So yeah, Godox is a nice cheap option that works, but the hot shoes connection definitely are questionable. I will agree with that. I don't think mine are bent, they look fine. One of mine did bend. It's just that like new camera. Uh oh. Okay. Yeah, it's working fine. What are people talking about? It's not working. I think the biggest issue with the medium format camera is the lens. They're heavy. This this one is not that heavy, actually. You should check out some of the, the Fu, Fujifilm is pulling it off. F what's the flash sync speed? You know, I actually don't know. I think, um, I think Fuji should have it on their site, right? Maybe let's see if it's on B&H. Whoa, oh, that's the 100. I was like a thousand, ten thousand dollars. That's definitely not the price. GFX 102 sync speed. Wow, one over 125. I think that's what it was like on the 100S as well. Okay, so that's fine. Let's see if we can see if we can trigger another one real quick. John, what's the one lens? 
mean, everyone swears by the 110, and it is great. I personally like the 80 1.7, um, but it is a little slow to focus. This 45 is hitting. It's 2.8, though. Do you use auto white balance when using flash? I do, unless the camera starts freaking out, but it seems fine most of the time. Um, so let's put this in slave mode. This one in master. Yeah, what are people talking about it wasn't working? This works just fine. Yeah, 80 millimeter cut is so good. It's such a good lens. It's a little slow though. I'm not gonna sit here and lie to myself like it isn't. I noticed my a7 IV has magenta hues when using flash on auto. I mean, yeah, a lot of a lot of the flashes definitely struggle a little bit. That was hard to get this flash in and out of that hot shoe. Yeah, most flashes, when the flashes come out, or most cameras when the flashes come out, the auto white balance is like, ah. <laughs> Did you buy this one or Fuji just loaning? It's mine, yeah, I bought it. I, I spent all my money. <laughs> I mean, I am selling my 100S to like lessen the pain of the price of it. So at least I can upgrade that way, but this boy ain't cheap. I'm always so right now this this lens is 2.8 and I'm at 250 1 over 250 for the shutter speed but like I'm way up at like ISO 1600 to make it look halfway decent in camera I guess where's my histogram Where do you turn that on at? Natural view, playback, magnification, display custom settings, framing guideline, and let's turn on the histogram. I normally don't have the histogram on, but I mean, yeah, so I'm way up at ISO 1600, 2000 to make it look decent in camera. All right, off to shoot a wedding. Do great. See you in a bit. I'm about to look at these, see what the grain looks like and stuff. Yeah, I know that, that wedding day feel. You're like, well, time to get ready for the wedding day. All right, so there's the 120 shots I took with the 81.7. And then down here, we should get the me testing out. I'm just gonna put this as a test. Yeah, that was me testing the flash. So these were flash, well, let's import these flash photos and then what? You better grace us with a full review of that thing. <laughs> Appreciate your GFX 100 content. Oh yeah, definitely. Um, I plan on hopefully doing a couple shoots and taking it with me to weddings. Cause that's the real, again, they're saying it's faster. So for me, that's the first thing I want to try out is like, is it really gonna work for a wedding? The 100S could, but it was a little slow, so. How's your expense been with the GFX files on Lightroom? I, they seem fine to me. I've never had any problems with them. Like they load fine, they look decent. Okay, so this was ISO 640. 
just a little grainy. The grain looks nice though. Like it doesn't look like bad grain. Also you gotta make sure none of this, yeah, like this sharpening needs to be off. Look, you can see me in the <laughs> There goes my keyboard. I got a I got a keyboard set up and stuff. Here goes the last photo I just took. So this is what I was saying. I'm at ISO 2000 and it's still pretty dark in camera. Cause again, I try to expose correctly in camera. That's how I like to. That's a little bit more grainy. It's still not so bad. The grain actually looks kind of nice. Like it has its own kind of like feel to it. Let's see what it looks like if I edit this. Whoa, they changed the histogram in the last update. It looks all different. Did I use the right one? So there's a before and after, still fairly grainy. But again, the resolution is so high that the grain is like tiny. So I don't know if that's really, to me, that's not an issue. Again, I'm not, my, my problem with a lot of stuff is people are like extreme pixel peepers. And to me, that's just a waste of time. Like you're never gonna see the photo like that. No one is ever viewing your photo like that. I need to, I need it to be absolutely perfect all the way down to the molecular level. You know, like no one sees that. It's either online, on your website, on Instagram, or it's in a print, which the print's not that big. You know, like it'll be big, but not that big. They seem to be pushing out a lot of updates recently, maybe trying to keep people on board. That's probably why. That new background blur feature is pretty cool. Let's heal out this screen protector not working correctly. <laughs> uh oh, that was bad. Lightroom, step up your game. If you got a beautiful frame that makes you really feel something, is someone really going to be blowing it up A2 size and saying, but look, exactly, like no one's, no one's doing that. That's, I just like, I, I just, I don't understand pixel peepers and maybe I need someone to sit me down and like explain. Cause to me, it's like, you're just, you're like wasting your time being picky about, like as long as it looks decent, I don't know what the problem is. Also too, we got this AID noise. Fujifilm, yeah, like the Fujifilm grain looks good. Like it actually has like a character to it. It doesn't just look like slop. That's not what it looked like without the enhancement. This thing bugging. Let's do 50% AID noise. Oh, music is high? I thought it was quiet. I'm sorry. Okay, so we're AID noising it right now. The funny thing is I add grain to my photos. So it's almost like backwards that I'm sitting here denoising and then adding grain back to the photo. <laughs> it's like...
But yeah, this is, uh, it's beefy. It feels good, yo. I can't wait to actually use it. Okay, well, while it's doing that, these were the shots with flash. See, I was at 640 ISO and then at sync speed. Loud? It's still loud? I just turned it down. If it's any softer, you won't be able to hear it at all. Yeah, that's actually most of the time when I go back and I rewatch my streams, the music's quiet in my opinion. You barely hear it. If yeah, and it's usually set there. It's usually set really low. I guess you just don't like the music. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for my choice of music. Cause yeah, if the music is loud, then my voice must be blowing your ears out. Oh yeah, I'm curious. Let's see if this is, um. this looks like a hot shoe on the top. Am I gonna break my camera doing this? Is it like I just bought this camera and I broke it because I was curious? It is a hot shoe. Wow, oh, it's acting weird though. I'm not gonna. Do you ever shoot any other genre of photography for yourself outside of weddings? Not really. Um, I, I guess you can say like lifestyle. Uh oh. Um, but yeah, I usually like, if I'm shooting, I usually like to just capture, I'm a very capturing moments type of person, which makes sense why I do weddings. So I like, uh, street photography a lot, but I don't live in New York no more. It was fun in New York. And I used to shoot a lot with my iPhone actually. Um, so I would say street photography if, and when I get a chance to do it. And yeah, just kind of like capturing, you know, what's happening with my family and stuff. Here goes the D noise. It still looks noisy. Lightroom fronting. I mean, I only did 50%. Again, it's kind of whatever. The white balance looks off to me. So yeah, in my normal process, I export and then I open it in exposure and then I add my sharpening and grain that way. I'm trying to get into the street some more, but I'm in a pretty rural area too. Yeah, that's, that's what happened to me. Like I was in New York and I used street photography to kind of learn and get used to my camera and kind of go from there. And then now I'm in a rural area where it's like, there's not really anything to street photography with. This is the grain I add in. There's also, I've been debating, so I, my black and white photos have a heavier grain and I've been debating using that heavier grain on my photos and just giving it a really like grainy nostalgic look, but I'm not sure if I wanna do all that because it's, it's pretty heavy. It adds some contrast too. I kind of like it though. I'm not going to front. Maybe one day I'll start doing it.
What's another, again, for anyone who just joined in, if y'all haven't seen that Lightroom blur. The Lightroom black background blur is ridiculous, y'all. The fact that you can actually visualize it and change the depth of field, so good. So yeah, I want it the front to all be in focus. Maybe we can bring this up just a bit, but we don't want her losing focus. So it needs to be her in focus as much as possible, probably up to about here. We gotta turn it, it's looking a little fake. The thing is too, what people don't realize is like, depending on how wide your shot is, it's gonna make the difference for how the focus is gonna look. Like you can't, you know, blow the background out like that on a wide shot, it's gonna look fake. Cause a wide lens wouldn't have that much depth of field on it anyway. You have to really be like tasteful with it for it to look realistic. Yeah, even that's too much. It's not moments based, but I've tried to do some texture focused stuff in my area. All this stuff around here might be mundane for me. Cool. I mean, yeah, I, I've always wanted to get more into some more like still life type stuff and uh, landscape, but I feel like I just don't, I feel like I don't see it. You know what I mean? Like, I don't think I have an eye for it. I feel like I'm just taking pictures of a thing. There's, there's something very different about really taking landscape photos and just being like, here's a picture of a mountain, <laughs> you know, like, because I saw it and it looked cool. It's like, eh, it's more than that. That's probably good there. I feel like I was seeing weirdness behind her right here for the background blur. Yeah. It should really only be changing like back here. Yeah, just a, just a little bit. Cause it's a wider shot anyway. I may even be able to pull it up just a bit more. Did I make the depth to Yeah, it doesn't it doesn't look good blurred right behind her like that. It's cuz that wall is right there. It really only needs to be yeah, that little back section. Which then because of that, I think I can turn it up a lot more. Yeah, I think I was at 65 and it looked okay. Yeah, it's really only that. But yeah, that looks fairly natural. I think I've become more intuition based. If something interests me, there's probably a reason. That. True, true. Because I've I've taken some cool like landscapey type photos before. Um, I think I still have prints somewhere.
Got a bunch of Polaroids and things. Let me see. I don't even remember printing some of these out. I think a lot of this was for a video. I had made at one point. So yeah, this is like, this is when I was like starting photography and I was still learning a lot. So I was taking stuff like this, a lot of street photography type stuff. And again, kind of like you said, like if it just caught my eye, I would go ahead and take a picture. Something I used to love to do a lot when I was in the subways is like, take the photo where the black and white almost looks like it's like, um, like a movie. And it's like the letterboxing of the movie. Here's one I took with my iPhone. Oh, I didn't realize I had a print of this. I'm glad I printed it because I lost the photo. Here's my absolutely favorite shot I've ever taken, street photography wise. I lost the original photo, so this is really all I have of it. Hands down my favorite picture. Honestly, sometimes I look at it and can't even believe I took it, but that was me early on, early photography. This was a kind of cool one. I don't know, I like the colors of it. Yeah, and I've always, I've always been happy with my framing and stuff. I think my composition has always been pretty good. Like I never, and obviously you can always get better at stuff, but I never felt like my composition was like trash. Wow, these are old. Yeah, I am glad I printed these out because. I used to like this one a lot too. This one looks like, um, I don't know, something you would see on like a print in like Target. You know, like how you can just buy pictures and they have them there already. What happened to your hair? I cut it off. It was getting unruly. This is a little Artifact Uprising book. A lot of it is a bunch of my iPhone photos. Yeah, it just, it prints from Instagram. So it has my captions and stuff. And this is back, this is when I used to take pictures for the love of photos, to, you know, like, trying to learn photography, not really sure what it is, just seeing stuff and, you know, taking a photo of it, pictures, you know? Like this was, um, this shot here was from my first ever engagement session, literally first ever session. And I guess the couple liked me so much that they were like, if we weren't already booked with our photographer, we'd go with you and I'm like, bro, this is the first time I'm getting paid to shoot. <laughs> you know, like, that would be a problem. This, uh, this picture was one of my favorites too. This was taken with my iPhone. I don't know what the composition or something was weird. I like the angle and everything. Yo, John, what's up? Did you trade the 100S for the, yep. Yep, we got it. Got a good old 100 too. About to start shooting it. I have it focusing on my face. That see, at least Fuji 
Fuji's gotten better with the face autofocus, right? Like, it's keeping it... Back in the day, it would be like, oh, there's a thing in front and switch. But yeah, I traded it out. Gonna see how this one does as far as, like, autofocus and stuff. Because the 100S, it can hold... It could hold down a wedding, but it definitely was a little slow. Goes to show people are happy with pretty basic things as long as you document. I, I mean, it's true. That's why a lot of times, from a photography perspective, a lot of photographers don't respect wedding photographers as photographers. Because they're like, oh, you know, like, that ain't photography. And, like, in a sense, it kind of is not, you know, like, I'm not even going to be mad at them. Because, yeah, if you take a decent photo, that's all it takes. Like, people will be fine with it. Like, that's all they need is the stuff documented. Let's see what else is in this book. Yeah, it's a lot of it's really just a bunch of Instagram photos, but this goes back to my love for street photography. Because, yeah, when I see something and it just it looks interesting to me, or I think I could get a cool composition out of it, like I'll take a photo. This was also a, from an early session I did. I did a portrait session for like, you know, like LinkedIn type stuff. That shot turned out really good. And that's the thing, a lot of people, they always like, oh, what were your first photos? Like I never really took very much trash photos. And I'm not trying to act like my photos were always amazing, but they were never like straight trash. Like started from the bottom, you know, like my photos were always decent. I had kind of like a knack and natural talent for it, I guess. Do a little bit more of this portrait mode real quick and then I'm about to sign off and go do something else. But yeah, this this Lightroom portrait mode is is pretty good. What's improved with the two version of the GFX? Um, so again, I've never used it. So this is just coming from specs. It's using a new processor. Um, because of that, I believe it's faster. So they said the autofocus is faster. Um, the shutter speed is faster, which I have already tested. Now, the low shutter is kind of slower. It only does two frames a second, which is fine. Um, and then the high shutter goes all the way up to eight. We're talking mechanical, which is crazy. And I tested it out at the beginning of the stream and I got 121 photos before it buffered um, raw photos, which is crazy for medium format. And it, it buffered real quick too, shooting on that CF card. Now, if I was shooting dual card, going to the SD card and the CF, it probably wouldn't have gotten that much before it buffered. But even still, if you're able to high shutter and get like 50 out, but I think that's the biggest thing is that it's faster, has better autofocus, and the video specs are way better. Way better than the 100S. Yeah, this background looks so like, you look at it now and you're like, that looks terrible. But the fact that I can come in here and tweak the depth of field, that's where this really shines. Now, I do wish, I wish you could paint in the depth of field too, because you see how, you see how it's grabbing this part of the branch, but this is clearly behind her, so it shouldn't be as in focus as she is. That's the only problem here, and I don't, I don't know what these mean. Focus amount. Oh. oh, can you paint it in? You can. What am I? Okay. Okay, I was about to say, there's no way you can't paint it in. So wait a minute. Auto mask. Can I get rid of focus? Is that what this is? Oh yeah, okay, I see. So blur. Yeah. Let me 
then you can also paint in focus. Wow, this is cool, y'all. I didn't realize you could do all that. I'm about to make a video now. <laughs> now that I know how it works. About to start shooting all my wet <laughs> all my portrait sessions on iPhone. I'm really, I'm not going to, but, but look at that. That's believable, yo. Look at this in the corner here. iPhone will never replace mirrorless for weddings for the simple reason that the couple will not trust you being the yes. That is the realest reason. At the end of the day. Yeah, no one, but I mean, who knows? Times might change. A lot of these younger folks who grew up only using stuff like iPhones and that's all they know and can see, I don't think they'll know the difference. If someone's professional and they're like, I'm professionally able to do the thing, give it give it 10 years. Honestly, like I wouldn't be surprised. But yes, overall, no one, no one's seriously paying real money. So we're talking, you know, 5K and up is gonna be like, yeah, take my wedding photos on a night. No one's gonna. If anything is gonna be like, but see also too, you gotta think about it. Like a professional like myself with 10 years of experience editing photos and shooting weddings is not gonna produce a photo that looks like this on their iPhone, they're not. They're just gonna take a picture and be like, here's the picture I took with my iPhone. There's a difference. Like taking the time that I took to really make this background blur look believable and you're not gonna do that on every single photo, you know? Did you hide this? So yeah, it's, I hid everything there while I was editing, just so I could see the photo. Quick question, in your opinion, is the XS20 good and capable camera for wedding photography? I mean, I think it's, I think it's possible. I haven't shot a wedding with it yet, um, and I do have one, that's what I'm on right now. Um, I would say the biggest issues, so the shutter speed only goes over to one over 4,000, and clearly there's the electronic shutter, but if you're not planning to switch back and forth, um, it's also single slot, which is fine. I The first three years of my wedding career, I was on a single slot too, so it's not the greatest. <laughs> I think those are the two drawbacks for wedding photography. Other than that though, Cause that's what I was even, I was thinking about using it as a, like a reception camera, you know? And then I can shoot the whole day on GFXs when everything's a little bit slower. And then once the action picks up, swap over to like an XS20. But you know, we'll see. <laughs> so yeah, it's, it's possible. I don't think it's the best choice. I think something like the X-T5, or the XH2S makes more sense. Just hide the iPhone in a old broken Mamiya. <laughs> Yo, that would be so awesome. Like build yourself like a body and just put the iPhone in it and have the back of the screen be the iPhone and no one will ever know. Put like a fake lens on the front. They're like, oh wow. I took your whole photos on a iPhone. <laughs> But yeah, like that's believable, yo. It's pretty good. And again, like if you sat a photographer down, 
by themselves without telling them what the thing was and just like, check out this photo I took. And they're like, hey man, what'd you take that with? You know, an iPhone. You just destroy their whole world. What, an iPhone? So see, this looks super fake, right? It just cut all into her and stuff. But again, with the visualized depth, we can come in, we can change our depth of what's in focus. And honestly, for this shot, it looks like I'm gonna have to paint it in. See, I didn't know you could paint it in before, so that's, that's what was throwing me off. So now I can add focus right and i guess we would want a hundred percent focus well, let's go to like 90 right and then hold on let me see the picture yeah so it's really only it's this thing here It needs to be just as in focus as she is because it's like right beside her. Do I have to double up on it? I wonder why it's not getting as red as There. Right? Yeah. Look at that, yo. Tell me that's not believable. Like, it's not bad. That's crazy. It's like pretty good. And the fact that you can paint it in. Now, it looks like if I'm looking at it, Why do I still have the brush? Like you can see it looks a little weird here. Yeah, and like, I think I missed the tip of that. Honestly, like, it's good. Let me see, where's my, I think this is my GF, or my X, yeah, XT5 here. Once the photo decide, there it goes. So yeah, look at that. So, iPhone is on the left with the new added blur and then the xt5 is on the right and tell me that's not like look at the bokeh in the back of this one like that's believable it looks close to the fuji blur and it's just like fake blur and that's the thing like again it's not like the best solution in the world but the fact that you can even take your your phone photos this far is ridiculous like it's it's kind of crazy. Clearly the XT5 looks better and you got the foreground blur here which you're totally missing. And like I could probably try my best to get a good foreground blur but like the foreground blur was looking kind of fake to me. See, it it can't even see the trees. Like that's not going to work. That's as good as it's gonna get. 
I mean, yeah, it, unless you're like, again, unless you're pixel peeping like really deep, like really deeply pixel peeping, like you're not gonna notice the difference. Once AI can completely automate the blurring process, then we're, <laughs> yeah, cause you, yeah, you saw, I still had to do a pretty fair amount of work to get it to look believable, but still it's possible. Like you could literally shoot a whole session on your iPhone and make it look believable. And again, that's 48 megapixels. And I, I don't think it's a true 48 megapixels. It's like in camera magic basically, but it, it, it looks good. Maybe stamp layer the image so you can control the blur on different. Yeah, true. Um, and even like, again, like check out the resolution too, right? I think, so this is, yeah, this is the iPhone, right? And if I go to compare it to the Fuji shot. So here's the X-T5 100%. And then here's the iPhone. Like you're getting, you're getting in there, you know? Like even the dimensions of the photos are almost the same. Like it's crazy. Look at that. Fake blur on the right. And you can really like, if you really dig deep and pixel peep, you can tell it's fake. But again, who's doing that? These hollow circles are clearly fake looking. I've never seen a lens do that in my whole life. Yeah, I, I like this five blade. I think it looks the most realistic to me. The circles don't, they look fake. The five blade is where it's at. All right though. I have now unboxed the beautiful GFX 100, the second. <laughs> it's just funny because I'm John Branch, the fourth, and this is the GFX 100, the second. <laughs> but yeah, it, it feels nice in the hand. That's my initial first impressions. Other than that, I have to actually shoot with it to see how it does, so. But thanks for hanging out along with me while I was unboxing this new camera and checking out some of the iPhone background blur um i'm gonna start trying to get back on my normal live streams at some point in life hopefully again but for now i will catch you all next time all right peace